Okay, Kirsten, um, I want you to see these trees on the screen. I wonder if you've ever seen trees like these. Okay. Massive trees in America called the chandelier trees. Can you see? They're so big that even a car can drive through them. Wow. Massive, massive trees. I wonder if you've ever seen a tree like this before. Trees where the roots grow on the outside of the soil. Um, more often than not, we used to roots in a tree being below the soil, but every so often a tree's roots will grow so big outside the soil and it looks pretty cool. Question for you. Yes. What do roots do to a tree? Oh, uh, a couple of things. Uh, they help keep the tree nice and strong, so if it's really windy, they stop it getting blown over. Um, they help suck up all the good nutrients and water from the soil as well to help the tree live. Absolutely. Roots are crucial, aren't they, to a tree's life. They do exactly as you're saying. They keep it strong. They suck in the nutrients. It's essential for trees to have good, strong and healthy roots. Roots are also, though, used in different ways. What if I said to you, Kirsten, do you know your roots? Ooh. What would you say? Like my hair? You know, like uh, the roots of my hair? Not quite your hair. Go, do you know where you're from? Do you know the ah. roots of your heritage? Okay, yeah. What would you say? Oh, it's, it's Northern Ireland born and bred. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a funny saying, isn't it? Do you know your roots? It's a bit of a strange saying, but it's causing us to think about maybe where we've come from. Mm. So you might see it sometimes when like a high profile athlete gets all the way to the top, but their first original coach says, don't forget your roots. Don't forget where you started in all of this. You were a little lad or a little girl who came to our athletics club and now look where you are. Or a parent, for instance, who maybe hasn't grown up in the country that you live in and is from another nationality, you'll say, oh, don't forget your roots. Don't forget your roots because they're passionate about you remembering a little part of your nationality. My boy Finley is in a bit of a unique situation. He's got a Welsh dad, a Scottish mum, a Northern Irish grandfather, and he was born in England. Wow. So he's a right mix of roots. <laughs> that's what makes him him. But that's what roots are, aren't they? They're where we start from. They're the kind of origins of our kind of existence. And our roots really matter. It's important for us to think about that. Well, with that in mind, why am I talking about roots, Kirsten? Over the course of the next few mornings, we're going to think about what it looks like to be a Christian sports person, where we can connect our sport and our faith together. But what we must remember before we look into some of the details of that is where we are rooted as followers of Jesus, where it all starts. Knowing our roots is really, really important. And so there's a little verse on the screen. I'd love you to read it for us yeah. if you can. Not a problem. So we are going to be reading from the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verses 6 to 7. So then, just as you have received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Okay, so this is written by a guy called Paul, actually, who's writing to a small church in a, in a town called Colossae. And he's writing to remind them of the good news of Jesus and also help them think about how they can grow as Christians, how they can stand firm and strong in the different opportunities and challenges that they're facing. And do you see what he's saying? Just as you received Jesus as your Lord the first time you heard about him and trusted in him, how do you carry on in the Christian life? Well, it's continuing to be rooted and built up in him. That's the way. It starts with Jesus and it continues with Jesus. A wholehearted trust in the Lord Jesus. That's how you become a Christian. But it's how you also carry on as a Christian. Kirsten, for those who don't know you, mm -hmm. why don't you explain a little bit about how you became a Christian? Was there a significant time or conversation or something someone shared with you? Yeah, absolutely. So I was about 13 years old, so same age as many of you here today, and I was away on a school camp and one of my teachers uh, was given the talk that night and they were explaining what it meant to be saved. And I hadn't really heard that sort of phrasing before and I was sort of thinking, well, you know, what, what, what is it that I actually need to be saved from? You know, I, I go to church, my mum and dad are Christians. You know, surely that means then, you know, I'm a Christian as well. And over the course of um, that weekend, I understood what it meant to um, have my own faith, to make that decision for myself, uh, to follow Jesus and to decide to live for him. 
and to be saved because I couldn't do it myself and my parents couldn't do, do it for me and you know it was had to be something I had to choose for myself. Mm, fantastic. And what age were you again? I was about 13 yeah. yeah. Amazing, fantastic. See the Bible encourages us to be a Christian is to receive Jesus and continue to be rooted and built up in Jesus. But maybe you are sat here and, and this is quite new to you or you've not really thought about that before and a question comes into your mind, but, but is it worth it? Why should I receive and, and be rooted in Jesus? Well, as you said, this is actually chapter two, that's the number two there. He's written in chapter one a load of reasons why Jesus is worth receiving and rooting our lives in. Um, I just, we have not time to read it all now, but I just thought I'd list some of the things that he says, Paul says in chapter one. They'll appear on the screen, but let me read them to you. He says that Jesus is God. He says that Jesus created all things at the beginning and alongside God the Father. He says that Jesus holds everything together by his powerful words and hands. He says that Jesus is in charge of every church. He says, Jesus was sent to the earth by God, the Father, to reveal himself to us and to show us his fullness. He said, Jesus died and took a punishment for us because of all the evil stuff we do towards God and other people. He says that Jesus offers us a way back into God's family forever. And he explains that Jesus gives us a new life, which is good, pure, full and free. See, this is the source of the Christian life. It's all about Jesus, exactly as you said, Kirsten. It's not about your church attendance. It's not about your parents or your grandparents kind of transferring their faith on you. It's not about coming to summer camps and ticking that box. Neither is it just trying to strive to kind of live the Christian way. No, if you want to be a follower of Jesus, it's about following Jesus first and foremost, and then rooting your life in him, knowing and trusting all that he has done for you and being willing to sink your roots deep into him in order to grow. See, just as Jesus is the way into God's family, he's also the way on in God's family. And that's what Paul's suggesting here when he says, continue to, continue to root and build your life up. Thinking about it a bit like this, Kirsten, how did you get to Sports Plus this week? Oh, uh, I got a lift with my friend Jake, who's one of the TL ones today. Has he got a nice car? Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Decent car. Okay, yeah. imagine just at the end of Sports Plus, we've had a great week together. We're all saying our goodbyes and we look out to the car park there and we see Jake in the driver's seat of his car, but Kirsten's pushing the car along. Uh, at first, we'd be a bit concerned, wouldn't we? Think, oh no, Jake's car's broken down. Right, everyone, let's, let's get behind and push and see if we can help. But imagine Kirsten goes, no, 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 it's fine. Um, don't, don't need any help. I just... Just fancy pushing Jake in the car back to Edinburgh. We'd all be a bit confused, wouldn't we? Uh, you f are you feeling all right, Kirsten? <laughs> and so and so said, no, uh, honestly, I've got some jump leads in my car. Let me go and get the jump leads and we'll start the engine and, and we'll get you there. And again, Kirsten shouts out, no, I I'm fine, actually. I just, just want to push it back. I mean, we'd, we'd really start to be concerned. I know you're Northern Irish, but like, I mean, that's just a bit odd. At the end of a week, maybe a hot and bit delirious, exhausted. See, it wouldn't take long, would it, before someone would come up to you, Kirsten, and say, um, is there something wrong with the engine? <laughs> no. Ah, so have you got the key? Yeah. See, put the key in. Turn the engine on. That's the thing. That, there's, there's power in that engine. Trust that engine to get you back. You don't need to push yourself there. Put your foot on the accelerator, and you're probably going to get to Edinburgh a lot quicker, and certainly far less sweaty. <laughs> See, sometimes we think about living the Christian life a little bit like pushing a car along. You know, we, we, we think it's all down to our efforts. We've got to find some sort of strength from within ourselves and, and push ourselves along. No. See, if Jesus is big enough and strong enough and powerful enough and good enough to be able to forgive us of all the rotten and rebellious stuff we do and give us a new life, he's also big enough and good enough and strong enough and powerful enough to help us live out our lives with him forever. This is what Paul is encouraging us to do when he says that we can continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith. We can trust Jesus to help us get through all the different things of life. And this is really, really important, especially when it comes to sports, see? Really important. Christian, tell me, 
what difference do you see of these two images on the screen, just quickly? Oh, okay. Um, okay, so the first one, uh, oh, it's very green, got lots of leaves, uh, it looks healthy, it looks alive. Uh, and then the tumbleweed, phew, it's not looking too good, it's a bit dry, uh, not much life going on there, a bit fragile almost. Absolutely. Absolutely. Huge contrast, isn't it, between those two things. One is strong and healthy and firm. The other one is not particularly healthy and getting blown around by all the different things and the elements that it's exposed to. See, as we think about being a Christian in sport, if we root ourselves in Jesus, he will help us stand firm in these challenges, in all the elements of living the Christian life. But if we try and do it on our own strength or we think it's anything else, it's a bit like tumbleweed. You know, people have different thoughts and opinions, different challenges come our way for as being a Christian in our sports clubs. And we must trust in Jesus and, and ask him to help us in those moments. I find it hard in my rugby club at times. You know, the boys want to celebrate in certain ways, talk about life and rugby in certain ways. And I, sometimes I want to join in, but I know it's probably not a healthy conversation. It's not helpful for me or for other people. What about you, Kirsten? How do you find trying to stand firm for Jesus in your hockey club? Yeah, it certainly can be challenging, um, especially when you feel like you maybe are on your own or you're one of, you know, a few. Um, but I think the truths that we read in the Bible are so encouraging because they are just, they help me just root myself, you know, a bit like a tree mm. um, in those truths that I can bring forward into the conversations that I might have with, with my friends and the way that the Bible um, you know, tells me to live my life is actually far better than often, you know, all the temptations that celebrating, you know, with the hockey club and living the way that some of the girls might live um, mm. might offer for me. Absolutely. We don't need to be blown around mm -hmm. by all the different things. No, we can stand firm. And Jesus promises to help us. Just as he, we received him the first time, we can be rooted and built up in him through all the different things that life brings our way. And we can also do it with thankful hearts. Do you notice that? Just at the end, see what he says? He says, you can be overflowing with thankfulness. I wonder the last time you were kind of overflown with thankfulness. Has there been some time in the last year or two, maybe you got given a present at Christmas time, a console or a bit of clothing? Maybe at the start of a new sports season, you get a brand new piece of sport and equipment. Uh, maybe you've been told where you're going on holiday this summer, or dare I even say, your parents have told you you're getting a dog. <laughs> These things, they can evoke in us kind of over, like an overflow and of like joy and happiness. Uh, and it's in those moments we just we kind of like, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And maybe you run across the room and you hug or you do the happy dance, or maybe you're slightly more reserved and you just kind of hold on to it and you squeeze it and you kind of give a thumbs up. They're the times, aren't they, where we kind of overflow with thankfulness. We see something so good, something so valuable, and we just want to smile and say thank you to the people who give it to us. Exactly the same when we really understand the good news about Jesus. We can live our lives as, as kind of a big thank you card for all that God has done for us. We can overflow with thankfulness because of the relationship we have with God. We're gonna think a bit more then about how that actually plays itself out over the course of the week, how we can pray, how we can uh, act in our sport and, and the words that we can speak. But this morning, please remember, the way into the Christian life is the way on in the Christian life and it's all rooted in the Lord Jesus Christ.